Hello everyone, my name is John and welcome back to my channel. Here on Bitcoin, we're at a major support level and we're beginning to break to the upside. If you haven't seen my last video on the 60 day Bitcoin cycle, make sure you check it out after this video. Plus Ethereum is also at this major support level. You can see we're trending to the upside and the MACD oscillator is now beginning to tick to the upside and we're going to expect higher prices in the future. Plus, we have a lot of crypto news to discuss as Ledger has proved that they're not keeping your coin safe. And the real saying is, not your keys, not your crypto. If you're not already, make sure you're subscribed, like the video, and leave a comment on your favorite part. First, let's discuss Ledger, the hardware wallet that is supposed to keep your crypto safe as you're able to store it off of exchanges and keep your own seed wallet safe. There was a post on Reddit right here that asking, is there a backdoor, yes or no? Somebody that actually understands the code of the ledger has been going through the code and seeing what's actually happening. Right here, they're talking about three different custodians goes against the number one rule of never typing your seed in a connected device. They wanted a response from Ledger and the response was absolutely horrid. This was the response from a Ledger co-founder. The device sends encrypted shards of your seed to different companies if you decide to use the service. You can of course still choose to back it up yourself. This proves that your keys are not safe as a hardware Ledger wallet is supposed to store your crypto off of exchanges and only you know the seed phrase that you never type into a computer. When using the Ledger hardware wallet, you're supposed to write your seed phrase on a piece of paper and store that somewhere safe. Now, what they're saying here is that your encrypted shards are being sent to different companies. And although you still have to choose to opt into this service, it's showing that really is Ledger as safe as they've always made out to be? This was a fantastic response from one of the Redditors. Trusting the proprietary secure element to do its part was the single thread that held this company together. And now it's been severed. I can no longer recommend Ledger to anyone who gives a damn about their digital sovereignty. It is an opt-in and you don't have to use it, but that is a complete misdirection on their part. A hardware wallet should have a secure enclave where the private key never leaves the device under any circumstances. They've opened APIs for the enclave to send encrypted shards to a third party on the internet, and that is just unacceptable. Ledger has also proved that they have deleted a tweet where they claim Ledger and our trusted providers have no access to your secret recovery phrase. As you can see here, this was a real post by Ledger and they've actually deleted it off their Twitter account. Again, I'm going to be taking all of my crypto off of this Ledger wallet as I do not trust them anymore. In other news, let's look at the difference between transferring gold and transferring Bitcoin. On the top video, you can see a massive police entourage having to escort these trunks that are holding a large amount of gold. But when you want to send crypto across the world, it's literally only a few clicks of the button away. This goes to show exactly where money is headed in the future. It is going to become digitized and it's going to be run on the blockchain where you have a fixed secure amount of Bitcoins, 21 million, and you're never allowed to print anymore. Right after the Tesla shareholder meeting, Elon Musk had an interview with CNBC where he was discussing that Twitter actually has the potential to become a real-time financial system as PayPal is not really doing the job that is needed to be done. And if you were to ask me to trust anyone with the financial system, I truly do believe Elon Musk has our best intentions at heart. Lastly, Canadian economists are saying that the role of the US dollar in international transactions as a reserve currency has been declining. If you've been seeing the news, which you probably wouldn't have been showed, especially on the television, that China is actually climbing to become the number one most used currency across the world. They're diverting from the US dollar as they don't believe that this is a sustainable future. The US dollar and the debt ceiling continuously rises, rises and rises making your dollars worth less every single year. Now, coming over to the Bitcoin price. On the daily chart, 
we have been at this major support level. Initially, this was a resistance, 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 broke to the upside. When resistance gets broken, this is a now a support level. So we've supported in this area. We did have a small crack to the downside, but now we're continuing to the upside, even shown by the MACD indicator as we've swapped from red to white, and eventually we are going to go green once we do break above this zero line. We've also ended the 60-day Bitcoin cycle, as you should know, and if you don't, please watch my last video, as the Bitcoin 60-day cycle is extremely important and can actually pick the highs and the lows in the market, Plus, it also gives us a future prediction as to what is the highest probability play for Bitcoin. And since we had this low right here and we had a right hand translated cycle, it means that the highest probability play right now for Bitcoin is actually to continue to the upside. So right now I'm looking to get long and get long quickly as this is the highest probability play. You can see we are still trending below the exponential moving average as we do have a bit of a decline in this area. And I do have a short term exponential moving average as well as a more longer term exponential moving average. And what I like to call this area in between of these two exponential moving averages is the value zone. So the first time that we came back into the value zone right in this area here, you can see that we did begin to sell off because we came back into the value. We came back into the average price and we have seen this exponential moving average tick to the downside. But within the next few days, I really am expecting a large bullish trend bar. Reason being is we have been going sideways for a lot of days and now some volatility is going to come into the market and it will come quickly. On the four hour Bitcoin chart, I've been saying for the last week that we did have this bearish divergence in this area. As you can see price, we made a low and then we made a lower low. But on the MACD indicator, we made a low, but then we made a higher low in terms of the indicators. This is a divergence pattern where we make a lower low in price, but we make a higher low on the indicator. And this indicator being the MACD is signaling that the volume and buying power is swapped from going down. It is now going to the upside. Again, also seen in the price as through this area here, we initially had a bit of a resistance level. Once we broke through, we had a solid breakthrough and we're coming back down. Once a resistance gets flipped, we're gonna use this area as support. And right now, we're just supporting multiple times. We had a support yesterday. Today, we came down as well and supported. And now it looks like we're going to push above and look to the upside plays. This exponential moving average will start to tick to the upside and we'll get a play above. We'll have a retest of this exponential moving average, which would be the perfect buy zone, and then hopefully continuing again to the upside. I'm looking for the highest probability plays since the 60 day Bitcoin cycle has ended and it was right hand translated. Again, high probabilities of longs. It is no guarantee. There are no guarantees in the market but you need to find a strategy where you have two to one risk to reward ratio, three to one risk to reward ratio, and you have the probabilities in your favor. And that's always what I'm speaking about in trading. Trading is not a 100% game, but it doesn't need to be. Before I move over to Ethereum, make sure you've liked the video, subscribed, and leave a comment if you've been enjoying these daily videos. The price of Ethereum is actually more bullish than Bitcoin right now. As I've been speaking about resistance, 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 we broke through this resistance level. It then becomes a support and we've been supporting, supporting, supporting. As you can see right here in these bars, we never close below this support level zone. We've all right even on this bar right here, we never close below that zone. We did have a wick into that zone. But as you can see, the bar never closed below. We actually closed above that zone, which is even more bullish than it is for Bitcoin. So we can even see through this MACD indicator, we're ticking to the upside. I'm expecting it to soon change from white to green, which would be even more bullish momentum. And again, getting a massive bar to the upside right in this area. I am expecting that in the next few days as that 60 day Bitcoin cycle can be transferred to Ethereum. It can be transferred to stocks, Forex, commodities. Every market has these 60 day cycles also transferring into four year cycles, which is another video that I will create in the future. So make sure you're subscribed and you're following my channel. We had that same divergence pattern on Ethereum that we did have on Bitcoin, making lower lows in price, but making a higher low on the indicator being the MACD. 
But the first time we did push up, you can see that I speak about in between these two EMAs is what I call the value zone. And look what happened the first time we came into this value zone, we did have a sell off. But that resistance was not strong enough as we've been continuing pushing to the upside and using this level as support. Now look on the four hour exponential moving average for Ethereum, you can see that it was going sideways here, but we're now beginning to tick to the upside. That's what I'm expecting. Big pushes to the upside. We then come back, retest this exponential moving average before we absolutely rock it to the upside. That is the highest probability play right now. There is no guarantees, as I've said before. That's all I have for you for today. Make sure you've liked and you're subscribed, plus leave a comment on the video of your favorite part. I'll see you tomorrow for the next daily video.